In these next few videos, starting with this one, we're going to take a look at the kinetic theory of gases. We're going to look a little bit more about the energy that's stored within gas molecules and therefore also moles of gas, of, uh, a mole of gas and molecules. So, the kinetic theory of a gas molecule, where do we start? Well, let's say that we say we write Ke to stand for kinetic energy. And kinetic energy is the energy of an object because it's moving. So, gas molecules are constantly on the move. They're running, they're not running around per se, but they're flying around through the atmosphere, through the container that they're contained in. They bounce against other molecules. Sometimes they rotate, they spin on their axis. They have all kinds of ways of storing kinetic energy. So let's just start with the kinetic energy in a molecule or a gas atom because of the motion, the velocity of the molecule. And so the kinetic energy is defined as one half times the mass times the velocity squared. Now, we're going to look at the velocity of, of uh, gas molecules in another video in a little bit more detail, but just let's say that the root mean square velocity, which is kind of the effective velocity representing, a, 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 um, let's say, accumulation or a, or a mass of molecules, it's a representative velocity of all the molecules in a gas called root mean square, and that is equal to the square root of 3 kT over m. Now, what are these things? Well, T stands for temperature, M stands for the mass of the molecule, but K is another form of that gas constant. K can be defined as the gas constant divided by Avogadro's number. So the gas constant is 8.314, that would be joules per mole times Kelvin. And if we divide that by Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23, we now have a new constant for the gas constant pertaining to a single molecule instead of a mole of molecules. So this is the equation we use for the RMS of a single molecule. Now let's work that number out because that's a number you might have seen in your book. So we have 8.314 divided by 6.022 e to the 23rd and we get 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 that would be joules per molecule times Kelvin. So this would be that many per mole. And so per mole disappears and we end up with a number that is joules per Kelvin per molecule, not per mole. So if we now combine these two together, if we take this and we square it, so VRMS squared is equal to 3 kT over m, and if we then plug that in here, we can then say that the kinetic energy of a molecule is equal to 1 half times the mass times 3 kT over m. Now notice that the mass disappears, and 3 divided by 2 is simply 3 halves, or the kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 2 k times t, which is a really interesting uh, equation. Think about it. The kinetic energy of a molecule does not depend on its mass. So the kinetic energy of a molecule only depends on the temperature of the gas. So in a gas where there's multiple molecules, let's say a mixture of gases, you can have hydrogen and helium and neon and nitrogen and oxygen, all that together in a gas container, the kinetic energy of each molecule is only proportional to the temperature, not how big it is. Which would seem to imply that molecules that are smaller move faster and molecules that are bigger move slower to compensate for the difference in their mass so that they would have the same kinetic energy at the same temperature. Now that would be the kinetic energy of a single molecule which for most instances, it doesn't make a lot of sense to calculate the kinetic energy of a single molecule. We're more interested, typically, in the kinetic energy per mole of molecules. So then, instead of using K, we go back and use the traditional constant R. So if we want to know the kinetic energy of a mole of gas molecules, so this would be the kinetic energy of a single molecule, then the equation becomes kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 2 r times t, and that would be for a whole mole of molecules. So as an example, let's say we have, um, example, let's say we have one mole of nitrogen gas at 20 degrees centigrade. So this is almost the constituents of air, right? It's almost 78 or so percent of the air is nitrogen. So that would be kind of representative of the energy contained in a mole of air at 20 degrees centigrade what would be the kinetic energy 
of a mole of nitrogen gas. And by the way, it turns out it doesn't matter if you use nitrogen gas or if you use air because the result would be exactly the same because it doesn't matter upon the mass. It only depends on the temperature. So therefore, we can say that kinetic energy of one mole of air or nitrogen is equal to 3 halves times R, which is 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin, multiply times the temperature. Well, 20 degrees centigrade is 293 Kelvin, 293 Kelvin. And let's see how much that is equal to. So we have 293 times 8.314 times 3 divided by 2 equals, and it's 3,654 joules. That's 3,654 joules uh, per mole. Kinetic energy for one mole of gas at 20 degrees centigrade. So let's quickly check that. That would be about 12 times, uh, that's, uh, yeah, about right. That's roughly correct. And so there gives you kind of an idea of how to calculate the energy contained within gas from a kinetic point of view, from a motion point of view. So molecules are constantly moving because they're moving, they hold energy. The energy for a mole is simply 3 halves times the gas constant times the temperature at which they're at. Now, that kind of begs the question, what is the energy of a mole of molecules when the temperature drops to zero? Zero kinetic energy, because at absolute zero, molecules don't move, so therefore they don't have any kinetic energy. So that seems to make sense with this equation. That's how you do that.